Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak, the podcast. I'm your host, Elena Fox. Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well in this moment in time. And that whenever and wherever you happen to be in this universe of infinite possibilities and timelines, I hope that you have already learned how to be here now I know that sounds funny because you can only be here now there is no tomorrow there is no five minutes from now you can't go backwards to yesterday or last week or last night and yet that is precisely where we spend most of our mental time is in the past or in the future. In fact, it's quite rare to be here now, isn't it? Even if you're still focused on today, you're focused on what are you going to have for dinner today? What time are you going to meet your friend today? What route are you going to take to get there? What transportation are you going to use? What are you going to wear? And you plan it out. Everything is a plan out. What are you going to make for dinner? What are you going to order for dinner? What are you going to watch on TV? What shampoo are you going to use tonight? (laughs) You know, when am I going to do my laundry? Like all these things keep you swirling in a mist of non-time. You're never actually here now. So I've been thinking about it today and I thought, well... Mindfulness being what it is. I want you to practice, no matter where you are right now, just being aware of you here right now. So if you're driving, if you start to get a little sleepy, you might want to pause this and wait until you get to a place where you could park for a minute, but I'm not going to try to do a hypnosis thing, but (laughs) it might put you in a different kind of a state of mind. So uh, the first thing I want you to pay attention to or think about is, uh, let's see, we'll start with your lips. What are your lips doing right now? Are you wearing your favorite lipstick? Are you using chapstick right now? Do you feel the weight of the chapstick on your uh, lips? Maybe you have coconut oil or your lips are dry. Just think about your lips right now. Are, are they a little moist or sticky? Maybe you just ate a cookie or a piece of candy or something. And think about uh, the weight of your shoes or your socks on your feet or your sandals. Or maybe you're not wearing anything on your feet. Maybe your feet are touching carpet or tile, or maybe you're sitting in the grass somewhere in the park and your feet are barefoot. What, what are your feet doing right now? Pay attention to your breathing and where are you with your breathing? Are you breathing shallow? Are you holding your breath because you're concentrating and thinking and you forget to breathe? How does your hair feel on your head? Is your hair feeling too heavy? Do you not have any hair at all? Do you feel a breeze or wind somehow or a sun bearing down on you? Think about where you're at and what can you hear right now? Really concentrate on what, on being very present in this moment and mindful of what sounds are you hearing? 
Are you hearing traffic, the wind, music from the neighbors, birds or crickets or dogs? Maybe you have a rooster in your neighborhood or a cat that you can hear meowing. If you could use your mindfulness or start a mindfulness practice if you don't have one, if you could sit here and, and, and just think about these things to be here right now, what can you hear? Also, if you imagine that everything you hear is a part of the holy OM, you know, the mantra OM, the sound that the universe makes as it's expanding. That's what the OM is. And if you are aware of all the sounds together and you realize even though it sounds, you know, maybe a little crazy or cacophonic, it's very loud and, you know, so many different sounds, they don't seem to go together, but all the sounds you hear are a part of that holy OM. If any of those sounds irritate you, that knowledge right there might help you. If you listen carefully and close enough, you will hear not only the sound of you breathing, but you'll hear your, um, your internal organs making noises. You can hear your heart beating. You could even hear the sound of your fingers touching your skin. If you touch your leg or your face, you'll actually hear the sound of that when you become very mindful. You become very aware. Colors start to have a different appearance as they become brighter. As you focus more and hone in on the colors without thinking about anything else. Try this uh, being here now scenario. Check in with yourself and check in often. If you can try to get to this several times a day, maybe have a little timer. It's going to put you in a much more peaceful state of mind, being mindful and aware of your surroundings and aware of what your physical body is doing and feeling and become aware right now. What, what is your emotions? What are your emotions doing? Are you feeling anxiety? And if so, are you anxious over something that you said or didn't say to somebody or something that someone did say or did not say to you? Do you have anxiety over your past? Are you remembering and recalling something that happened a long time ago or even yesterday? Because it's not happening right now. And if you bring your mind back to right now and you forget the past completely because it doesn't exist and you're sitting here in this moment right now, just I'm here and you're here. And and if you're listening to me, chances are you're not being chased by a tiger in the wild. Chances are there's probably not a gun to your head. Chances are there's nobody robbing you and you're not, you know, screaming your head off in traffic. (laughs) Hopefully not. (laughs) Chances are, if you're listening to me right now, you have the ability to pay attention to only me, the sound of my voice, and also the sound of all the things around you, the sound of your own body that it makes as it is existing in this singularity, this single moment in time. There are things happening out there in space in this very moment. There are things that happened in space millions of years ago and the light of which is only reaching us now. Those energies are coming in, always, constantly pouring in. In this moment, you could be soaking up cosmic radiation from an exploded star from thousands of light years ago. 
from thousands of light years away and thousands of years ago. If you are aware of your body, you can feel any aches or pains and you become aware of what food your body might want in the future. You might take account for, of your breath. Is it sparkly clean? Have you just recently brushed your teeth? Or maybe you need a little refresher. Just don't judge that, but just notice it. Just notice it. One of the biggest things that you need to know about being here now in the present moment is just all you need to do is just start noticing things right here. There's no arguments in this moment. There's no judgments in this moment. It's just a moment. And if you string these moments together, these mindfulness seconds together, you'll end up having a much more present life, living more presently and understanding everything that's happening in the moment. So what's happening with you right now? What are you feeling emotionally right now? Do you have anxiety over the future? Are you worried about things you need to do, bills you need to pay, people you need to talk to, people you need to avoid? Are you thinking about what are you going to do next week, next month, next year? How are you going to make ends meet? How are you going to get the bills paid? Um, All the Christmas presents you haven't purchased for various people? Worried about what other people got you and might be you know, more expensive or less expensive than what you got them. And there, that might be a discrepancy and that might become an issue or family's coming over or no one's coming over or you wish you had people to spend the holiday with and everyone has gone now and you could be alone. So you're worried and anxious over that. I mean, trust me, I'm in the same boat with that one. I mean, most of my family is is gone. The people that I used to have holidays with have all died except for my kids. God bless them. And they live in another country. So I won't be seeing them for Christmas this year, sadly. But someday, maybe next year, actually. At least I might see my oldest kid next year for Christmas. Hopefully both of them. But if I bring myself back to the present moment in this moment... Nothing's happening. Nothing is bad. Nothing's necessarily good, but it's not bad. Everything in this moment is neutral. I'm not experiencing snow or a hurricane or a crisis. I'm just here now in the present moment. There's a dog barking, there's crickets. Somebody dropped something outside. There's cars right now. Now somebody else is doing something else outside. Maybe they're hanging up their laundry. Sounds like they dropped something. I can hear my fan. I'm aware of my cat sleeping very softly and quietly. I'm aware that she's now moving around. Because I said, I talked about her and she felt the energy of that. When I stop thinking about the future, when I stop thinking about the past, I just think about myself in this moment right now. I'm grateful. I can breathe. I have my health. In this moment, I have everything I need. I've eaten today. I have food in the house. I have clothing on my body. I have a bed to sleep in tonight. And in this moment, I don't even need any of that. I'm just here talking to you. And that's okay. Being here now was about really being present and seeing, taking inventory of what's happening with you right in this moment. Try to take these kinds of moments every day. 
you don't have anything to worry about in this moment. You have to pay a bill. You didn't pay a bill. It's going to be due in this moment for the next five minutes. You don't have to worry about it. Six minutes from now, you can pay that bill and you're going to be fine. You could take five minutes break. Even if you have a job in an office, if you're in a company that is still going (laughs) in the middle of this pandemic, you could, during your 15 minute break, you could take five minutes to just notice. Notice how other people are occupied with the present. I mean, with the past or the future, and they're not occupied with the present. Notice how funny that is to you now that you know how to be here now. So I just wanted to bring that up. It's so important to be mindful. It's so important to just forget your worry, forget your trouble. You know, a lot of our anxiety comes from being aware of things that happened earlier in our lives, whether it was 40 years earlier from today or, you know, 40 years ago or 40 minutes ago, that's the past. And you're not in the past. You're right here, you know, and and so many people have their anxiety coming from things that happen that they keep reliving over and over and over in their mind. It's reruns, but there's new programming going on right now. There's new show and it's called your life. (laughs) And it's in this present moment, the moment to be here now. And so many people's anxiety come from the future. The future never, ever comes. Now you can plan and every day be here in the moment as you work and make money and you know, put the money in the bank or whatever it is. And then you buy your house or your car or whatever it is that you're looking forward to. But a lot of people look at where they are right now and compare it with where they want to be in the future. And then they get upset and sad and, and worried and they feel like, well, they want that now. And they try to get the future and grab it and lasso it lasso it like it's a a cattle at a rodeo and, and bring it in, you know, bring it here to the now and you can't do it because it's in a different point or piece of time. And and, and there's that anxiety. You can't lasso uh, uh, something from your future and pull it to you in the moment. What you need to do is meet it in time, but not feel the anxiety of not having it because you'll continue to push it away. And the universe will say, we see that you're feeling anxiety about not having something. That must be the feeling you wish to have because that's a choosing moment. That is the choice that you're choosing. That is the emotion you are choosing in this moment. So we're going to continue to give you that which you want because you obviously want this emotion of not having universe looks at you and says, well, they're, they've heard about being here. Now they've heard about being in the present moment. They've heard about the law of attraction. They've heard about how to use your gratitude and your mind to get what you want programming your world the malleable magnetic spaces that are around you, the the clear blue ether that want to bring, you know, the ethers that want to bring to you everything that you ever desired, all your heart's desires. You know about all that, and yet you're anxious and upset and even mad and even jealous of other people that have what you want in the future, and you're upset because you don't have it now, and that's creating anxiety, and the universe is going to say, well... I guess that's what she wants. That's what she's going to get. And then you bring more anxiety scenarios to yourself until you realize you wake up one day and say, Oh, I don't want that. I want to be here now because in this present moment, there is no anxiety. Now, when I look at pictures of the house that I want, I don't feel anxiety. I feel 
absolute pleasure and peace and happiness and joy because that's my house. It's going to be my house. It is my house. I'm grateful. It's my house. It's my house now in this moment. I don't care if 20 families move in there tomorrow (laughs) or if they have a contract. It doesn't matter. When I see that house and I close my eyes, I'm in that house in this moment. Because I can project my consciousness there. I could see what I want. And I know that if that house, in fact, is not mine in the future, I know that I can, in fact, get a house just like it with almost the exact same view even if I want. So there's no reason to be anxious. There's always other cars, other houses, other people to date, other universities that will accept you, other jobs to have. There's always other jackets or sweaters that you can buy if you've lost one. You you know, there's always other purses to, to get. My purse is falling apart, by the way. I wore my purse over my shoulder and kind of across my chest like I do and the other day and as I was taking it up off of my shoulder a piece of the purse fell off and and it was and my purse is black and I thought it was a bug <laughs> boy that put me in the now moment <laughs> I wasn't thinking about any anxieties then. I wasn't, you know, imagining having an argument with somebody then. I wasn't arguing with someone, a ghost from the past then. I I was more like in the present moment in the way of, ah, oh my God, what's that? (laughs) It was hilarious, actually. I'm like, wow, when uh, sudden and unexpected things happen, woo, monkey out of nowhere. (laughs) You know, spider out of nowhere. Oh, no. Oh, no. What shall we do? Dog barking at you out of nowhere. Oops. That puts you in the present moment. There's a lot of things that put you in the present moment. Have you ever been driving and you're like in your own world and you're like upset about the future? You're upset about the past. You're trying to listen to the music, but you you can't hear the music for all your raging thoughts. So you turn the music up and then your thoughts get louder and then you turn the music and then you're mad and you're mad about the past, you're mad about the future, you're mad about all, and then uh, you got to slam on your brakes because a person in front of you just slammed on their brakes. And if you don't slam on your brakes, you're going to get into a car accident. And boy, doesn't that put you in the here and now? (laughs) It really does. I've been in that. I've been in that exact situation in Los Angeles when I used to drive I used to drive every day and even in other parts, even in San Francisco, when I lived there, you know, I used to drive all, all around. And anytime I got out of the present moment, that's when the accidents happen. That's when those, Oh no, you know, situations happen. It's important that you not miss your life. Part of, um, the being here now, the being present, a huge part of it is to, especially when you're with your loved ones, whether it is your beloved cat or your sweet faced little dog or your parrot or your ferret, whatever creature you live with, whatever critter inhabits your space with you or your family your friends, your neighbors. If you can learn to be here now and be extremely present with the people and the beings in your life, you're going to learn a lot more information. You'll see in the moment how they look at you, how they act, what movements they make with their bodies, what energy you feel inside your body as they make certain uh, gestures or certain uh, statements or you could see that they're saying one thing and feeling another if you're staying in the present moment you're going to learn a lot about all the people in your life 
you'll find out that someone might be in love with you. Wow, you never noticed those pupils dilate before when they're around you or that they get a little bit of a sweat across their brow or their fingers are fidgeting around nervously. Huh, now that you're mindful, you didn't, you, now you notice that someone actually likes you. Actually, they're in love with you. Wow. Or you might notice that somebody is lying to you and they're giving you the side eye and they're kind of being a little shady and you didn't notice that about them before. Now that you're mindful, you're like, I don't think I could trust this person. Maybe they need to go. (laughs) You know, just whatever it is, you're going to notice more. And what if it's your child and you're looking into that sweet little face and if you're here now and you're not worried about the bills, what's going to happen or what already happened, you're going to hear your child. You're going to see who they really are. And you stay present and in the moment with your children every single day to the best of your ability. You're not going to miss it. You're not going to miss their childhood. I have a lot of moments. I wish I could go back. I wish I could be more present with my kids. I also have a lot of moments in which I was present with them listening to their stories and their thoughts and just laughing and joking and hanging out with them. I had a lot of hanging out moments. I'm so grateful that I did that because I didn't miss it. And I have those memories. Teach your children how to be mindful. Teach your family and your friends how to be in the present moment, in that mindfulness, be here now moment. Bring it up, make art, put it on your wall. So you see, be here now. So you know, (laughs) so you know to do it, remind yourself, do it, do it, do it. Because the more you do this, the more you're not going to miss your life. I have spent a lot of years trying to get to where I wanted to be. And then I've spent a little bit of time looking back going, wow, I wished I would have lived in those moments more versus worrying about the future, being disgusted by things in the past. Wow. I could have just spent the moments loving every moment. This is our last life, guys. This is it. This is in the third dimensional part of planet Earth. This is the end. We're never going to be back here again. You might have lived this particular life a thousand times, but today is the last day of December 9th. December 10th, depending on where in the world you're listening to this. It's actually the 10th here. I'm sure in Hawaii, it's still the ninth. (laughs) By the time I put this out, it'll still be the ninth, I think in Hawaii, but (laughs) I do have a lot of people in Hawaii actually listening. So, you know, (laughs) Aloha. I just heard a gecko in my house. I probably wouldn't have heard it if I wasn't feeling in this mindful way, actually. They're really tiny, and unless they're calling out with their little chirpiness, you don't really know they're there, but I heard it. It made a little tiny squeak, but it was a a gecko squeak. They're adorable. And I can feel the breeze on my back. It's getting a little cold. The temperature just dropped. That's another thing. When you're mindful, you can tell that when there's a temperature fluctuation. I love that. I love that. Being mindful is really incredible. Now, I went to Coursera.org like five years ago, and I took a mindfulness course from a European university. It was really excellent. I don't think I got a certification. I got something, though. I got like a... I just, it's like a pass. It's not like a, 
official thing I could hand into an employer or something. Although for $30, I could get it. But it was a really wonderful course. Ooh, what's that? Did you guys hear that? That sounded like a really big gecko. It might have been a night bird. There are some night birds. There are some birds here. I don't know if they're here, here, but in Peru that they, they live on the ground. So I wonder if we don't have the ground birds, the jungle ground birds here. You have to be careful where you walk if you walk in the jungle because they have their little nests with their little eggs and everything. It's adorable, but they're right on the ground. They usually hide next to very skinny trees. <laughs> so they have like an anchor, like, you know, to feel safe, but it's still a little scary. I mean, snakes eat their eggs. I don't know. I saw one of these nests in the jungle when I was there. Oh, it was very, I was so stressed out for that bird because knowing I'd saw also, also the, the little, I don't know if they're crocodiles or little caimans, alligators, something like that. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> it's like a recipe for disaster, but. Anyway, I just heard that. It just sounded like a bird, so very interesting. Anyway, um, so you could take a course in mindfulness. You can learn more about this idea, this present moment scenario. But if you just breathe, check in with your emotions, check in with your body, Check in with your mind. What's your mind doing? What are you thinking about? Let's take a deep breath and stop thinking. The Power of Now is a great book by Eckhart Tolle. If you read it, it will help you to get in the present moment. This man was suicidal, sitting on a park bench, getting ready to kill himself when he had the, mo- the ideas that be- eventually became the book The Power of Now and now he's a famous teacher if he had killed himself we wouldn't have had that wonderful book so I'm glad he sat down and uh, learned how to be here now so anyway um, I guess let's get to the space weather news uh, spaceweather.com it's always a good time <laughs> see what's going on now. The current solar wind speed is 328.8 kilometers per second. We are um, obviously out of the um, um, solar wind stream. There's no solar wind right now. And there is a solar storm that was coming our way, but they are thinking it is going to just go south of our planet so we're probably not even going to have it reached like it's not going to reach us it's going to go just below us so they don't expect geomagnetic storms but we might get a little bit it might come a little bit there's uh, absolutely no sunspots facing us the sun is blank and there is nothing there's no coronal holes open on the sun there's nothing nothing significant on the Earth's side of the sun right now. Now, there is a really incredible picture of Comet Leonard, if you're interested in seeing this really beautiful, it's kind of a turquoise, teal, blue comet. And it's uh, a really incredible picture. You have to scroll down quite a ways to see how long this tail is. It's a really big picture. You might love it. And the Earth is going to be, um, or I mean, the Comet Leonard is going to be 35 million kilometers from Earth on December 12th. So in a couple days, it's going to be relatively close to us. You might be able to see it uh, with a basic backyard telescope. The tail is more than four degrees long from our vantage point. This picture was taken by Michael Yeager, um, who photographed the approaching comet from Termkogel in Austria. And he did a great job. This is a really beautiful picture. I love it. 
and the blue part actually extends down quite far into the tail and the rest of the tail the comet is just looks like dust space dust and debris it's very very interesting so um yeah you might want to check that out uh the cosmic radiation that are currently coming in right now is 8.4 percent of the space age average this is news that comes to us from ulu's sodan kaila geophysical observatory the university of ulu in finland i think it's ulu or olu oulu i don't know o-u-l-u is how they spell it so um we've had a 48 hour change of plus 0.2 percent of the radiation uh coming our way what's able to reach us because there is no current wind stream coming our way from the sun basically there's no uh not is less protection than we normally get (laughs) the sun protects us from the cosmic radiation and when we're not having the solar wind or cmes coming in then the um neutrons <laughs> and the gamma rays and the quarks and all the things that are reaching us can reach us easier when we're not being protected by the sun and that's how it is all right uh according to nasa's all sky cameras and the all sky fireball network today uh december 9th 2021 the network did report 48 fireballs over the united states and here we go for those of you keeping score and track of the angel numbers 33 fireballs were sporadic 33 is your angel number six were sigma hydrids five were december monocerotids three were geminitids or i mean geminids and one was a puppet or pupid valid that sounds like a really disgusting dish on star trek like someone would be eating in a cafeteria or something are you going to eat your pupid valid? Oh, no, you can have it. <laughs> it's such a weird word, weird phrase. All right. Um, and that's it for now as far as the space weather news is concerned. You can go check all this stuff out, especially this Comet Leonard picture. It's really beautiful. Spaceweather.com. They have some awesome pictures. So um, next we're going to talk about the Schumann Resonance News. And keep in mind that every city has a different um, number as far as the Schumann Resonance is concerned. And if you are scrolling around social media and people go, ooh, it's 20 today, so I felt so whatever. I felt like more headaches, no wonder. And unless that person's in the city... <laughs> Where they feel it, it's chances are it's not the same in their own city. It's really strange to me that people can get all, you know, oh, I have the ascension symptoms. It's because over in Italy this thing happened. It's like, no, <laughs> unless you're in Italy, I don't think so, you know, because there's, you know, been spikes of, you know, 10 or 20 in Italy where it's like 300 in South Africa. But when it's at seven in Italy, people go, oh, I don't have any ascension symptoms today at all. And they don't bother to look at the other, the other website. (laughs) It's like if the Schumann residence was the same all over the globe, then we would all feel it when it spikes in South Africa, (laughs) you know, in, in, you know, Italy wouldn't affect us hardly at all because it hardly is anything. In fact, right now what's going on in Italy is uh, there's a complete blackout. There's nothing. They haven't had any news in two days now. And I keep, like, refreshing the page and refreshing the page and nothing. The last uh, spike they had was two days ago on uh, the 7th of December. Oh, which was actually my ex-husband's birthday. (laughs) My first husband's birthday, December 7th. And, uh, yeah, 35 is what was happening then. 35 hertz frequency. So, yeah, I just guess they're not going to report for a while. So, heartmath.org is the website for the HeartMath Institute. 
And on December 7th, that was the last uh, news they had. <laughs> also, so this is what was going on in the world then at the 2300 hour on December 7th on Tuesday. California was at 47 hertz frequency on the Schumann resonance scale. And uh, Hofuf, Saudi Arabia, as well as Northland, New Zealand, were both at zero. And uh, Lithuania was at 141 hertz frequency. Alberta, Canada was at 56 hertz frequency. And here's another angel number. Ooh, I knew there was another one coming up. I had a feeling. And here it is. Uh, 388 hertz frequency is the number in nor- um, in Hulului, South Africa. And that was, so 388. So the angel number there would be either 388 or just 88. So there you have it. Um, there's something I for- had forgotten to say about... There was something I, was, I, I had thought about after when I was talking yesterday about being in the presence of... <laughs> Not even in the presence, but like being the next door neighbor to a, an incarnated demon. <laughs> and all the, the crazy things. I put that in the show yesterday. It's what I talked about in the introduction. And and um, I remembered afterwards, and I think I didn't say this part, but all my food, I think I might have mentioned all my food in my fridge had gone bad. But I'd even, I'd come up with three or four other things also, I mean, I now that I've been one day away, uh, like a day and a half away, well, the person's not here anymore. I've noticed there's so much more joy and calm energy around me. It's like my own energy is returning back to me. Like the cat and I chased each other around the apartment. We felt um, a little bit more alive and free. At least I did. I think she always feels alive and free. I did notice that she's feeling a little better. Like she had gained a bunch of weight. That was another thing happened since she, since he got here. She, my cat had gained a bunch of weight and her whiskers started to turn white and they've always been black. So like half of her whiskers are white as they're growing out now. And the ends of her whiskers are like half of her whiskers are black. So, I mean, it was really affecting us in a lot of weird, different ways. But um, my phone had, my tablet had frozen several times. The internet kept going out. That was another one. The internet kept going out and it was just like, I had to keep shining the tablet off and on and it wasn't working. And there was um, something like it would just freeze up like a lot and when I was even looking at messages on social media, the messages would get jumbled up. Like the message from the other person would be underneath the message from me. So I couldn't read their own message and I have to keep shutting down all the, um, tabs or, you know, shutting down all the, uh, apps and then open them up again. And even though that kind of thing will happen once in a great while, it was happening all the time like calls were dropped. You know, my friend called me earlier today and we only had a couple times where it had to do the reconnecting thing. But when this guy was here next door, that reconnecting thing was happening like every 30 minutes. It was crazy. I'm noticing the differences of stuff like that. Like, wow. Food tastes better. (laughs) You know, um, I don't know. It's just, (laughs) <laughs> it's very, very, very strange. I think there was something else even that I, I couldn't remember. I think that, you know, things were breaking, food was going bad. Um, the energy was bad. My emotions were bad. Like a lot of sadness, a lot of, a lot of just random sadness, like that came from out of nowhere. Like, doubting myself that when I went like before he moved in, I wasn't doubting myself as much. I had a lot more confidence and I felt great. And suddenly he moved in and I had no more confidence. It was strange and it wasn't because he was there, but because the energy swirling around him, it was really weird. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up again in case 
you have doubts about somebody you meet and all of a sudden this other stuff is happening to you, they might be an incarnated demon. And if you are an archangel incarnate, they might be trying to go back to God and on a subconscious level, they sensed you. (laughs) They're scoping out your light. They want to be there with you. That's what this guy just wanted to be near me. But he didn't, he didn't knock my door. He didn't try to talk to me too much. He talked to me a couple times. He was really sweet. I think he was embarrassed a little bit that he was a demon and just trying to, you know, get back to God by being near me or somehow gain me to be an empath and take his energy from him. I don't know. I did my best. He'll be okay. But, um, I'm, I feel a lot better. <laughs> and now that he's gone, I just feel like, oh, I can breathe again. Like I didn't feel like cleaning my house at all. My house started to get really, really dirty. And as soon as he left, man, I cleaned off my stove. I was cleaning off my counters. I've been sweeping the floors. I've been like throwing things away. I cleaned off my fan that had a bunch of cat fur stuck to it. (laughs) I played with a cat more. I just, I just feel like things have cleared out a lot. Somebody I had not heard from since I was taken over by the hackers contacted me today and she might end up being a show sponsor, um, an ad sponsor. Her business um, might end up being, you know, in season six, we're tossing around the idea. She's trying to get the product to me so that I can actually, you know, test it and try it and show you guys on, you know, on my Instagram account that I have it and to tell you, um, what my results are of this product. So hopefully that can all happen, but I don't really receive mail here very well because of the way things are set up. (laughs) There is a post office here, but it, they just, the infrastructure isn't here. Most people don't get mail, so it's not part of the culture, which is funny because they were really good with the mail in, in Peru and in Guatemala, they were really good at the mail. In Mexico, not so much. I never got a thing, <laughs> even though I had ordered a couple things. But um, in uh, Colombia, I don't think I tried to get any mail. But here in Ecuador, I've tried to get mail two or three times, and it just never gets there. You go to the, you go to the post office, and you'll stand in line behind five or six people, and four hours later, you're standing in line. You know, in in all that time, maybe they helped three people, but they didn't actually help three people. You know, you ask for, okay, I ordered this thing from this place. This is my name. This is my address. And they go, okay, well, let me go in the back and ask. And they go in the back for 20, 30 minutes. And then they come back and they, what was your name again? Okay, let me go back and ask. And 23 minutes later, they'll come back. What was your address again? Okay, what was your name again? Okay, well, let me go back and ask. Okay. And then and let me write it down. Okay, and then they write it down. They go back. Ten minutes later, they come back, and we never got anything for you. I'm like, well, have you looked everywhere in the post office? Because it should be here. Oh, yeah, we'll do that. And then they go in the back again, or they <laughs> they go looking. They just, like, look around. They It's weird. They, like, look below the cow, the cabinets and the cupboards and they look through, you know, like, like, you know how you do when you go to someone's house and they say, Oh, help yourself to anything. And then they leave for a couple hours and you're starving. And you're like, where are the glasses? Where are the plates? Where's the crackers? Where's the fig Newtons? Ah, where's the food? And you start looking and hunting through the cupboards. That's what they were doing at the, at the post office. Like they just couldn't find anything. I'm like, well, where's any of the mail? And I noticed that every single person that went there to get their mail, like left angry and frustrated because there was no mail. Where the fuck was the mail? There's like, they're not effective. I get nothing here. (laughs) Except frustrated. Going to the post office is literally a waste of your day. You're going to be exhausted and frustrated and worse. You won't get your mail. (laughs) You'll get nothing. It's very, very odd. Although there are post office boxes and there are rumors of people who have received mail in the post office boxes. I don't think there's a post office even remotely close to where I live. 
Although I could go and ask and see if there's a post office box and try it again, but <laughs> hopefully I'll get it, but I don't know. I, I, I'm very skeptical about it. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing really well today. I hope that, um, you know, we don't have much going on space weather wise or not much, much going on. I mean, most of you, if you're in South Africa, I'm sure you're feeling it with the Sean resonant spikes, but I don't really see much else going on, you know, in, in the world that would, you know, I feel like we're getting a break. Honestly, I think by the weekend, we'll probably get more stuff happening energetically, but I just feel like this is the calm before the storm. I feel like on the 12th of December, something will start to happen. And I feel like it's going to happen all the way through. I think it's a portal from 12, 12, 2021 through 12, 21, 2021. I think the other day I said it was 11 days. It's like, I can't do math and talk at the same time. I think it's actually nine days, but <laughs> I, I guess technically maybe 11 if you count both the days on either end. I don't know. Anyway, I, <laughs> but I think that we're going to get um, something. Something's going to happen. I feel like there's a magical time coming. I also noticed that the Mercury retrograde shadow periods coming up in the next few weeks. And I also started to notice that today is episode 49 of the fifth season. This episode tomorrow will be episode 50, which means we only have two weeks left together of this season starting tomorrow. That'll be like, you know, we'll have two more weeks. That's it. Just, you know, after today, 11 more episodes and that's it. And I won't see you guys again until February. Although I will be on Instagram and I'm not going to click any links anytime soon ever again on Instagram. Uh, but so <laughs> that's what happened in the first place. They lied to me about the link that they sent. And I, it was from somebody that I knew and trusted. I thought Cosima, God bless her. I think she's okay. I don't think she was the hacker. I feel like the hacker took her account over. That's probably why I haven't heard from her too. Cause now that I got my account back. She might not have hers back. And somebody else whose account was hacked from my, from mine. She's been talking to me today about that. Just trying to get her account back. She still hasn't gotten her account back. And it was Thanksgiving is when the, our accounts were stolen. So hers was stolen the day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> She was cursing my name <laughs> the day after I was cursing Cosima's name. And I feel like this is what's going down the line. Like maybe one of her friends lost their account and they're cursing her name. I mean, it's just, it's just this long chain of insanity, but don't click on any links on Instagram, but you can actually go visit me there again. You could contact me at mermaid girl, eight, eight, eight. I am back, baby. I am back. And so if you want to contact me for any reason, just let me know. All right, guys, I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, we're going to talk about something that is emerging in my awareness field. I'm calling it ropes. (laughs) And we're going to learn about what that is right after this. guys, I've been making episodes of Metaphysical Soul Speak, the podcast, for a while now, and many of you have contacted me wondering just how you can support me and my podcast. Well, I have two solutions for this question. Number one is to become a listener supporter in which you go to the Anchor app, locate my channel, and sign up anywhere from 99 cents to $9.99 monthly, and you can stop anytime. Or number two is to make a one-time donation of any amount 
via Zelle, bank to bank, or through PayPal using my email, mermaidgirl888 at gmail.com, also located in the show description. Now with this option, you aren't uh, obligated monthly in any way, and you're also not limited. Thank you all so much in advance for your support. Let's keep metaphysical soul speak on the air and onward and upward to the fifth dimension together, guys. Thank you. All right, guys, this one took me a little bit longer uh, to come up with this uh, episode. Um, I'm recording this at 333, (laughs) so maybe there is something uh, magical about it after all, getting it out there a little bit late, but um, so God told me this earlier, a couple hours ago, so I've been kind of having this conversation with God for a while, and I said, okay, when I sit down to write, then you could tell me, you know, what to write, but... So I pretty much channeled the message, but it was a conversation that I was having with Prime Creator about this because earlier I was talking to a friend of mine and he told me of a situation in which he was talking to somebody and he was trying to do something nice for the person and the person refused and then he tried to do something nice again and kind of pushed through with, but I want to do this for you and the guy refused and then he's like, but really, I'm just trying to help, so I want to do this thing. And then the guy's like, fine, I, you don't have to, <laughs> you know? And that's and and later I asked God, what is that? Not about these p- people specifically, but what is that kind of a thing? And God told me. So eventually I told my friend what um, the insight was that came to me. But it was really what Prime Creator had told me. And... So I started to see it like, um, sometimes being connected with the prime creator, the way that I am, I, it's almost like I could see the world as a series of matrices. And it's almost like I'm peering into the matrix (laughs) and I could see things really clearly in a way that I never did before. So I'm really grateful for the experience. And this is why I share these, um, these insights and these things with you. So, uh, tonight we're going to talk about the relationship overlay patterns and what these are. Um, we call them ropes, R O P S or ropes, (laughs) because sometimes, you know, you, you have enough of these ropes, you're going to hang yourself with them. (laughs) You know, these relationship overlay patterns, they could be a real buzzkill to the relationship. Um, you know, if you don't check, well, God's saying, yeah, if you don't check yourself, you will wreck yourself. (laughs) If you don't have a conscious awareness of who you are at all given times and where you're, you know, coming from, but also who you are now in this moment. And, you know, if you just kind of start going by rogue memory of um, the relationship that your parents had or relationships you had in the past, um, you start having these relationship overlay patterns that come back to haunt you and it overlays the current situation that you're in. So for example, um, If you're in a relationship that is kind of combative and if you grew up in a household where your parents were always fighting and you're with somebody who grew up in a household where their parents were always fighting and maybe you both experienced um, the witnessing of your parents getting a divorce, um, you learn that the communication style between people that are married should be that of fighting all the time, bickering, you know, taking little digs at each other. Right. So 
then you get into a relationship, your first relationship when you're young, and then you bicker with the other person, you fight with them. And then they, if they came with the same relationship overlay pattern, now you'll, you guys will fit together, but it will be dysfunctional because you're like bickering and fighting all the time. And there's not real communication, you know, and then you might get out of that relationship and you might end up with somebody who's different. You know, maybe they came from a different, you know, scenario where their parents got along really well and they were very loving and they had no bickering and no fighting and, or they fought away from the kids. And so the kids didn't get to see their fighting is a part of every relationship, you know, but it should not be the day to day communication part of the relationship. But, you know, so like in the morning, say you're a little bit cranky and, you know, and you're tired and you haven't had your coffee yet. And the other person you know, oh, sweetheart, are you going to get your coffee when you're about to get your coffee? And then you snap, you bite their head off. Of course I'm going to get my coffee. What do you think about, of course I'm going to do that. <laughs> you know, and you bite their head off, you know, um, that's like an example, you know, so like, and then and, and the other person's like, whoa, where did that come from? Did I do something? Are you mad at me? No. Why? Why are you always on my case? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then it just one thing leads to another and there's like, what? But in, in situations like this, and it's super, super, super common, and I've seen it in my own life, and I've seen it in other people's lives, and I've been with people that were, like, coming from a place of fighting all the time, used to fighting all the time. I've been in relationships where uh, the other person, like, I've known them for, like, a couple of weeks, and I never gave them any, you know, impetus to... Um, be weary of me or worry that I'm going to cheat on them. But they just come at me with, who are you talking to? What were you doing today? Where were you today? <laughs> and it's like, whoa, where'd that come from? I gave you nothing. And so now looking back on some of the scenarios that I have come across in my own personal life and seeing my friends go through this shit. <laughs> and some of you who've actually contacted me and talk to me about your relationships. Some, I started to realize, and, and I asked prime creator, what is this? And he's like, well, it's real. It's like a relationship overlay pattern, you know, like you overlay the pattern that you were given and you just overlay it like a blanket. You just throw this on. This is what we're doing. This is a pattern I came here with. And then they throw their pattern onto you. And sometimes they match and are dysfunctional and sometimes they're a positive rope, <laughs> a positive relationship overlay pattern. And in the positive ones, then those can work. But you're still working from operating from a non-mindfulness area of your mind. Uh, you know, you're coming from a place where you're, um, uh, it's like a subconscious um pattern. Like you're, you're, you're just not really operating from your conscious mind, you know, like you just kind of are in environmental hypnosis and you're just kind of walking around like, whoa, you know, biting your head off or, you know, whatever, you know, you have the, like, you might have, um, you know, a partner who wants to be a caretaker and they can't stop, but, or they can't help, but want to always be a caretaker, you know, um, like, maybe you know one parent is absent from the home and the only parent that's home is constantly caretaking can i get that for you can i do that for you can i cut your meat for you can i tie your shoe for you can i give you money can i do can i take you to the mall can i you know like parents that maybe should have stopped coddling you when you're five or six years old but they continue and you know maybe you're like 30 or 50 and your mom's still there coddling you you know and maybe that's your relationship overlay pattern and so you're a caretaker and then so you'll go out in the world and you find the people that need a caretaker like the heroin addicts or you know the um broken people the really super broken people and then you know after a couple of years you're like why doesn't this work like what the hell you know, i'm taking care of this person and then they they hurt me they cheated on me they went and did all these drugs and you know or they you know, started stealing from the stores or whatever crazy thing that their overlay pattern was. Cause you know, some people come from a very dysfunctional place and sometimes those people are us, you know, we're all dysfunctional to one extent or another, but what's weird is we're all dysfunctional in different ways because our parents, you know, have 
different ways of viewing the world, you know? Like some people that grow up in the countryside are told by their parents, don't ever move to the city because people from the city are deadly. They're dangerous. They will kill you. They have guns. They're terrible people. And so if you end up getting a job in a city, you're terrified of all the people around you. Then you operate from a place of fear. And so you don't trust anyone in the city. You know, that might be one, that might be a pattern. So there's all these crazy ideas and patterns and there's so many of them, they're not just one thing, but they're, and they're overlaid. It's like they're, it's like layers and layers and layers. And it's just like overlaid. It's like you experience stuff in a wide variety of ways. And I'm going to go over the notes that prime creator and I wrote together. Um, I wrote him while he just told me the whole lecture tonight, basically. But, um, so he, but you know, he told me to talk a little bit about it first. So basically, um, you could be going through your, your, your life and, you know, like maybe this week something will happen in your parents' lives and they will overlay, you know, they'll tell you a lesson. Oh, let me tell you when you go to the city, la la la, whatever, overlay this pattern. And then, you know, they'll have a fight. And now you see the communication styles during a fight. You know, and, and they might be conscious people, but then a fight comes up and then they go back into their patterns that were overlaid on them. And then they overlay that pattern on the relationship. Well, that ends up being overlaid on top of you, you know, and then, you know, a couple of years later, something else might happen or a couple of weeks later. And you just get all these, like, you know, how do you handle when someone comes to the door unannounced? How do you handle it when somebody calls you and you didn't expect the call or they just show up, you know, the pop in, you know, how do you handle that? You know, well, your parents handled it a certain way and you might tend to handle it the same way, or you might do it the opposite because you didn't like the way your parents did. And you said, I'm not going to do that. You throw that overlay off and now you created your own pattern. That's just basically the opposite of that, but it's hard to see it unless you are very consciously aware of it. Like I, um, did not like the way that my, my stepmom was. She was the opposite of my mom. My mom just left other people alone, period. My mom just didn't really, you know, <laughs> she didn't really socialize much. She didn't have many friends. She had several friends, but she didn't have like, you know, tons and tons of friends. You know, she just had like a handful of friends. She kept, you know, her, uh, very close friends were like she, people she knew all the way her whole life growing up, like high school friends. And she didn't really, um, go out and make a lot of new friends every now and again, she'd make a friend and, and then something would happen. And then that was the end, you know, it's just like, I don't know, they moved away or we had a fight or I don't know. I just can't stand her anymore. I got to know her and I didn't like her. But I think my mom was a little bit more introverted and my stepmom was extremely extroverted. So my initial relationship overlay was pattern was just, we stay home. We don't do anything. We don't do anything with other people. This is just who we are. You know, that's, that's the one I got. And I know that I'm that way now. And sometimes it's painful because I want to go out and actually have a friend and, and, um, in college I did and in high school, I did kind of had one or two friends, but and then in university, I had tons of friends, but as you know, now I'm an older adult and I'm kind of like, well, I'm okay because my mom, this is the pattern I initially saw. So I'm, you know, I feel like it's normal. Even if it's not normal, I still feel like it's okay. But I saw that my stepmom was the opposite. She went around like popping into people's houses. I've talked about this a lot. She was just like walking, Hey, what's for supper? <laughs> you know? And she'd have this like big booming goofy ass laugh. Like, ha, 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 look at us. Oh my God. Would you look at the time? It must be time to eat. And people would be like, Oh, well we ate early today. Um, I guess we have leftovers. Um, do you like cold pork chops? Uh, you know, and she'd be like, yeah, sure. We love that. And Elena, pull up a plate, help her do the dishes, you know? And, and then she'd like make me do work in somebody else's house. And the other person would just be like, fuck, who is this person? Why are they coming over? And now we have to eat that. You know, we have to like, we can't have leftovers. They have to eat 
you know, we have to eat with them or they have to eat in an eh. You know, she put people in a really weird, awkward position like all the time. And so I did not learn that relationship overlay pattern because I had already learned from my mom that we just don't really socialize much, you know. And my mom gave me the one where it's just you, me, and dad. That's it. It's just us. And we're a happy family. And we were. And my mom and dad had been married for 17 years when they divorced. You know, so they really did give it the old college try. But uh, my mom just, after a while, I don't know what happened really. I mean, she got bored. She wasn't happy with her sex life because I guess in the sexual revolution, it was the 1970s after all, um, I guess people started talking about sex more and she started realizing maybe there is more to life than the, in the you know, whatever was happening in her relationship, which I don't want to speculate on. But um, she wanted to experiment. She wanted to do more fun things rather than, you know, the missionary position and cuddle afterwards and that's it. My dad was happy with that. He didn't care. He didn't want to know anything more about it. He was just good to go. You know, he had that part of his life settled and that was it. And my mom was like, well, we could do this. We could do that. Hey, let's try this. Let's do that thing. And my dad's like, why, why? You know, well, anyway, it was the whole thing. And so she ended up having an affair, which was terrible. You know, it was terrible for me to see her kissing another man. And it was terrible for my dad to find out it broke his heart. And he was still so in love with her. Even at the end of his life, he was still so in love with her. But, um, and he even told her he had come out like a couple years before he died. He'd come out to visit me when, um, I had my, um, my first child was still a baby and he came out on Easter. My, my child was maybe six weeks old and, and he came out and he called my mom and he said, you know, you've always been my first love. You always were my first love. And, and it never changed. I never stopped loving you, you know? And so I, I still have that kind of relationship overlay patterns, like a romantic sort of, oh, my dad was so romantic, you know? And he always tried and he gave her gifts. And my mom, you know, when she got her, um, the love of her life, finally, that was my stepdad. Um, they were together like 40 years. When, by the time she died, you know, she had already been with him like 40 years. So pretty cool. She and my dad divorced when I was five. You know, so it's pretty cool that she was actually able to find the love of her life was her soulmate. My, my dad was one of her soulmates, but her main soulmate might have been my stepdad, you know. And they, you know, he I saw him being kind of a dysfunctional person a little bit here and there. But they were really happy together. And I was happy that they made each other so thrilled. But she, my mom was always doting on him, holding his hand, always, you know, oh, smoothing over his hair. Oh, can I get you food? Oh, can I get you something? Oh, let me do that. And so that was my relationship overlay pattern. And I know I still have it like doting on the other person. If I'm in a relationship, I become my mom, <laughs> you know? So these are the examples that I have that I can share with you that, um, hopefully gives you a good idea of what this is. So let me go over the notes the, uh, in the conversation I had with uh, God earlier. So this is what he told me. The, from, from now on, I'm going to read what he told me So about this. So the ropes. <laughs> this is the ropes, baby. <laughs> the relationship overlay patterns. Okay. So he says, we grew up with patterns. Um, and these come from our environment, such as our home, our school our church, mosque, or synagogue, or our temples. This also came from our playgrounds. You know, just this is what we learned from being around other people and in environments um, that were, I mean, could even come from the bowling alley, you know. These relationship overlay patterns come from anywhere where we spent a great deal of time and anywhere we spent with other people. Now, sometimes... Um, you, if you were a kid left alone a lot, he's telling me right now, it could come from that as well. So keep it in mind. I mean, it's usually from environments, from people, but sometimes if you were left alone, you develop 
your own relationship overlay pattern, which would be to be a loner or, you know, the lone wolf type. But, um, this is so your relationship overlay patterns come from people such as your parents, teachers, or religious leaders. Um, it could even come from, um, your peers and your babysitters later in life. And you could develop the relationship overlay patterns pretty much at any time. You can learn new tricks, even if you're an old dog. <laughs> That's what God is telling me right now. So as I'm relaying this, he's like, oh yeah, there's this other thing. Okay. So, um, so, uh, let's see if here, he gave me an example. If you grow up, um, mostly staying like during your day or night, um, if you're living outside, um, you know, such as like, say you have a pool and like my cousin grew up, um, a great deal of, of her time was outside walking around the neighborhood, um, swimming in the pool, uh, playing badminton or whatever, you know, um, just playing outside, even as a teenager, like from, you know, day one, like she grew up always having swimming pool. She was in the pool every day of her life. She grew up in Southern California. So like her kind of, um, you know, some of her patterns came from being outside and the culture of that. And my patterns came from being inside because we didn't have a pool most of the time. You know, we had like a little doughboy dough boy pool that was filled with dirt. <laughs> and I was afraid to go in there. There's like a dead lizard in there once. And I was like, I'm done. <laughs> and there's you know, dead bees, dead lizards. There's always something dead in the pool. I'm just like, eh, thanks, but no thanks, I'm done. You know, this is just like, it was all rusty on the side and it was kind of bent. And I was afraid, I thought it was literally dangerous. Hi girl. You want to say hi to the people? How are you doing? Hey, here's knowledge. She came up here. She's standing on my notes, so I might have to hold the baby. Do you want me to hold you? Do you? Do you need mommy to hold you? Oh, give me a kiss. Oh, such a good girl you are. Oh, do you hear that little plea for that little mew? Okay, I gotta pause this. <laughs> so basically, the activities that I grew up doing. I, my relationship overlay patterns are also part of just living inside. Like my summers, um, it was hot outside. I couldn't stand it. I was always told from a very young age that my skin is very pale and I'm going to burn very easily and I should stay out of the sun and I don't want to get cancer and I don't want to be sunburned and yada, yada, yada. Right. So my culture, like my, the way I grew up was staying in the house, watching TV, watching movies, reading books, coloring, doing art, listening to music and, you know, watching animals. And that's exactly what my life is right now. You know, pretty much. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm doing the show for you guys. Of course I do other things as well. You know, I listen to audiobooks, and you know, I do read and I do have my, my beautiful kitten here, you know, well, she's a grown, grown cat, but my queen here, <laughs> But, um, that's another one, you know, so like when you get together, somebody who's an outside person and you're an inside person and you don't really discuss that first, it's going to be like, well, let's go outside. And you can be like, well, no, let's just stay in, you know, <laughs> and that might be a relationship overlay pattern that you try to overlay your views on the other person, not realizing how they grew up. You know, maybe their parents are fighting all the time. So they were always outside to be away from the parents. You know, my parents, when they fought, I was inside in my bedroom with the door shut. You know, that was my response to it. And so that became a pattern. So anyway, um, so you can have a pattern of comfort, you know, and you're comfortable outside or you're comfortable inside. And this turns from uh, a pattern of comfort. It turns into a pattern of uh, preference. And so you end up being like an indoor person or an outdoor person, you know, and it, it, can, it could come from a wide variety of places. Like, you know, like my um, cousin who had the big, huge, beautiful backyard and she had her games and her friends liked, liked to hang out. And they were always asking her to like, you know, let's go, you know, to um, 
the mentor golf place, or let's go to the, you know, the, um, I don't know, the one where they drive the, the little go-karts around, you know, she's always doing activities outside, you know, going to the park and let's go play Frisbee. Let's go, whatever, you know? And, and I had, I did have a lot of things I did activities I did outside, but my day to day, you know, my initial pattern was just to be inside all the time, you know? And so everyone, you know, thinks why well, just in this way and I just prefer it, but maybe it's just a pattern. And maybe you could break it and, 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 you know, bust out of your shell and out of your comfort zone sometimes because you're like, oh, well, I don't really have to be that. I don't have to be an indoor person. Why, you know, you start thinking about it or I don't have to be an outdoor person. I guess I might enjoy, you know, a nice cuddle in, you know, by the fire with a cozy blanket and a nice warm blanket and a hot cup of tea in the wintertime. I mean, that's not bad. That's actually kind of fun. You know, that's another way I could be. Yeah, all right. You know, maybe you're an indoor person and you could say, well, maybe, maybe I could have furniture outside that's comfortable. looks like indoor furniture. And then, you know, you could start to bust up some of those patterns so that you could get along in a wide variety of situations and still feel emotionally okay. You know, but, um, so <clears throat> a relationship overlay pattern could, an example could be that, Maybe you grew up in a culture of violence, you know, and also, you know, like where your parents would punch each other or hit each other or worse, you know, and it's a very horrible uh, relationship overlay pattern that you get. So you end up, you know, people that are in those kind of environments, they grow up being um, either violent. That's how they react to, you know, their solution for any conflict at all is violence. You're going to yell and scream and throw shit and break things and punch the other person to get them to think their way, you know, and it's just a relationship overlay pattern. That's a, that's a dangerous rope right there, you know, and, and, uh, and sometimes when you grow up in a culture of violence, you become the opposite where you want to hide and you want to run and you don't want to be a part of the violence. You want to get the hell away from it. And so then you start to silently withdraw and retreat into your own mind to the point where you emotionally leave your environment. And then you just, you know, do the emotional blunting where you don't have any emotions at all. You don't know how to feel. You're just like, I don't know. You lock all that shit up. You bottle it up or you get inside your mind. You know, um, I, um, grew up in a very loving household but then when my dad married my stepmom, she was a total raving bitch towards me. She was violent. She, I mean, I've got um, bone chips in my head where she threw me. She picked me up by my hair once and threw me into a porcelain sink. And it busted a little part of my skull, um, just like the surface part of my skull in, in the top of my head. And I still have like a little bone chip there. I could still feel it. You know, and it was like, oh my God, like I, and it was shocking because I had before it had grown up and I'd been told how special and how loved I was and how I was an angel sent by God to be the daughter of my parents. And I was the first grandchild and I was super, super loved, you know? And then when my dad married my stepmom, she's like, you're not so special. You know, who the hell are you? You little bitch. You know, and like she would say that to me. I'm seven years old and that's how she's talking to me. It was just terrible. She was a horrible horrible, evil person, you know? <laughs> and so I was just like, ah, you know, so I grew up originally in a culture of love, you know, and, you know, and peace. And then I was thrust into this culture of violence that my dad, you know, never was a part of. He was never home when it happened. And then when I was 18, he said he knew every time it happened and said he thought I deserved it. And it was just like, whoa, I don't know what's happening here but I'm leaving you crazy people. And I did, I left, that was, you know, like a week later I was the hell out. And, and within months I was living in California and I didn't talk to my parents for 10 years. Cause I was like, fuck that. (laughs) I just want to go back to my beautiful relationship overlay pattern of being peaceful and loving, you know, the one that I first originally grew up with. That's totally who I am because that's, well, that's the pattern I choose, right? 
And not all patterns are bad, by the way, obviously. If you're, you know, if you grow up in a peace loving, uh, you know, environment and, and, and that's your culture, that's awesome. But see, I grew up kind of in a combo. So I have to still navigate the waters of how do I handle this thing? And I've had fights with people. I only had one fight with an ex-boyfriend a few years ago, but he got violent with me. And then I responded with violence because I just did. It was a really horrible fight, but, um, we like physically hurt each other. It was terrible. And I did not enjoy that. (laughs) It was a terrible, terrible thing. But, um, some people end up, uh, uh, the cat, you're not supposed to be on the computer, girl. Hold on. In any event, I, I did not want to, um, now I'm holding the baby on the other shoulder. (laughs) I love you, baby girl. She wants mommy to hold her right now. Such a sweet love. Now she's, oh, she has to stand on my shoulder. She's wrapping her tail around my face. (laughs) It's okay, girl. I'm doing my show. You could say hi to the people too, you know? All right. So, um, I learned from that experience, of course, that I don't want to ever be in a culture of violence again. And and we ended up breaking up, you know, um, not long after that. Um, but you know, obviously it's not a way to resolve issues at all. And, and so if you grew up with this relationship overlay pattern, it's something you're going to have to consciously recognize. We're going to talk about it in a little bit, how to do that. So if you, um, let's see. So basically if, so you grow up either in a culture of violence or a culture of peace or a combination of the two, and you grow up in a way where you learn how to resolve your issues or not resolving your issues like at all. And you know, it depends on who you're around and who you get into a relationship with depends on how they grew up. And so your fighting styles might be opposite or different, or maybe your fighting style is not to fight at all but to retreat, you know, based on what you went through. So anyway, um, so you're, you can grow up with different communication styles and they can be heavy or complicated or clear and breezy. They could be a combination of any of these or of something else entirely. Now, another relationship overlay pattern has to do with money. Okay. This one's really, really intense <laughs> for some people. So you might grow up in a, in, um, a, a household where money was dealt with as a business transaction. Like it's a, just a cold, hard fact. Oh, time to pay the bills. Okay, cool. Let's do that. You know, or it could be super emotional and it could be emotional, positive or emotional negative. It, it, it you know, could be you know, oh, we give money away freely because that's how we love people. This is what we do. You know, we like to give money to charity. This is where philanthropists is just who we are, what we do, la, la, la. Very happy, but very emotional. Or um, you could be, grow up in, in a way in which money is directly tied to you and your self-esteem. This is what makes you a man. This is separates you from other men. The more money, the better. The more money you have, the more of a man you are right? The more of an independent woman you're going to be with the more money you have, or, you know, you don't think you're an adult until you have a certain amount of money, you know, and it's all about the money messages. It's all about the messages that you have. And sometimes, you know, if you take uh, money from, or if someone tries to give you money, you might feel uh, your relationship pattern might end up being like, um, an example is, uh, like someone tries to give you money cause you need money and you get really embarrassed and you feel like maybe you don't, you're not really, um, a man if you take money and you're not an effective adult and, and, you know, and if you take money, then it's like emasculating you, you know, if you're a man and you know, a lot of men have problems with that because of the culture that they grew up in, you know, the culture of the household and how their parents, um, you know, responded in relationship to money. And so you could have completely different money styles and money blueprints. And that's a whole nother thing, but, uh, your relationship overlay patterns are all messages and they could be messages that you came here with from your 
previous lifetimes, previous lives, or what you learned since you've gotten here while here in your uh, formative years. It's what you learned when you're a little kid, you know, on through your teenage years. So your relationship overlay, overlay patterns can be happy, sad, positive or negative, and it can include your responses. So it's not only what other people are doing, but your relationship overlay patterns do include your responses to your stimuli, the environment and other people. So, um, like my parents would scream and shout and, you know, have yelling matches with each other. My stepmom and my dad, they'd yell at each other. And that was their relationship overlay pattern was to scream at each other. And they both had the same one yelling, 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 you know, that's what they wanted to do. But my response to the stimuli of them yelling, especially with the, you know, mild autism I have going on, I was just like, fuck that shit. And I'd go in my room and I'd, I would hold my ears. Sometimes I'd be in my closet with the door shut and I'd just try to put like a blanket over my head. Cause I was like, I don't want to be around that shit. When I was little, I was like, oh my God, I can't handle that. The energy of that is terrible. And I remember just like rocking back and forth, like just, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I just, I can't, I don't want, you know, and I, and so my relationship overlay pattern became not from what I was seeing or witnessing, but my response to it was to just, I'm retreating. I'm not talking right now. I'm going somewhere else. (laughs) I'm going to hide, you know, to the point of where, you know, I would get, um, even just a few years ago when I was in Detroit, someone come around knocking on the door, I'm hiding. I'm not going to, I'm an adult and I'm hiding. Like, I'm that's, I'm, that's my, that's my relationship overlay pattern. I don't know who's taught. I don't have anyone coming over. I didn't have a conversation with anyone who's going to come over. I'm not answering the fucking door. Who's at the other, who's on the other side. One time I did answer the door and it were met. There was a women posse and they had guns. Another time I answered door and men with guns. Fuck this shit. I mean, Detroit's a crazy place, but (laughs) you know, and I, 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 I was able to calm the people down and they didn't use their guns on me, but they had every intention of if this shit goes sideways, you know, (laughs) and that was their relationship overlay patterns. You know, now my, my response to that stimuli is I'm going to go back and sell my house and make a fortune because <laughs> I've waited seven years and it's worth a hell of a lot. It's actually worth 10 times what I bought it for, which thank, thank you. God, you know, knock on woods can continue to rise in value. And then I could get the money back out of it and just be <laughs> done with the city entirely. But even though I loved it, I honestly love Detroit. I love being there, but I don't want to live there alone. So anyway, um, So anyway, uh, let's see where we are. Relationship overlay patterns. Um, so yeah, so it's not just the, it's not just the other people and what they tell you or what they show you and how the environment is like, they might not tell or show you anything, but the environment might be absolutely messy. And so you get used to that and you're okay with that. So your relationship overlay pattern is I'm okay with the mess. I don't have a problem with the mess. Mess is not a problem for me. Okay. It's just what it is. And I've walked into people's houses and I'm like, damn, it's really messy in in here. And they go, really? I don't even notice it, you know? And that's been me at some times. And then also I've changed that where I love it to be neat. I like everything in its place, a place for everything and everything's place. I like to have it nice and neat. But, um, like right now my place is messy. I don't have anywhere to put pl- things. So it's driving me crazy. I want to have cabinets and cupboards and closets and ways to put things away. Cause it's kind of exciting for me to have it all nice and neat. So I, I did change that, but now I'm like, er, here we go. You know? So it's, but it's nice to know what I've become based on, you know, I grew up in a very messy household and they're constantly hiring maids and yet it was still messy. It was just like, they can't pick up after each other and they tried to make me do it. It was terrible, you know? And so it made me really bad at cleaning the house. Obviously I didn't want to do it. I didn't want, I rejected everything to do with what they showed me because they were always yelling at each other. And I was like, Ugh. it was, I mean, it wasn't, 
it was almost it was almost as bad as George Costanza's parents on Seinfeld. If you ever watched that show, the parents are hilarious, but it's super funny because they're not your parents. <laughs> and if your parents were like that, you're like, oh my god, you relate to it in a way that makes you you feel George's disgust and his like, oh, I just gotta get out of here, you know. And that's his relationship. Our relay pattern came from the wanting to get away from that wanting his parents to move to Florida, like just move, you know, we need that buffer zone. Right. So anyway, um, you operate, um, from the vicinity of these patterns and they can be very hard to break because they become very hard to see. They are changeable though. They are changeable with work and with knowledge of them and the acknowledgement of the need to change them and also the willingness to do so. However, most people lack self-insight and awareness, and they don't know about their patterns. They don't have the awareness of their patterns, and they will continue to act from them until they can see them, and then they change them because they want to improve themselves. So a lot of times people will claim that it's astrology or just their personality. I'm just a messy person. You're probably not just a messy person. You're probably a person who grew up in a very stressful environment that was very messy because your parents were messy people and that's what you learned. Or maybe you grew up around parents that were very lazy or maybe they were very traumatized about their previous life, you know, with the way they grew up. And so their response to stimuli is just to do nothing because they're traumatized. Like sometimes laziness is what we call it, but the reality is it's someone who has PTSD and they're not handling it very well and they can't make a move. People sit on the couch just eating or, or just fretting or talking on the phone or just doing whatever activity to avoid life, to avoid doing things to, you know, watching TV just because they're so scared about the shit that went down in their earlier life. And they end up just, you know, trying to deal with the trauma and they don't know how, you know, so laziness isn't always actually laziness. Laziness most of the time is just trying to still get over the trauma. So don't ever call anyone lazy without knowing the whole facts, Jack, because you know, it's probably not what you think. So, uh, so it's probably not astrology or your personality necessarily, you know, when it's a problem in, so when you get into an adult loving relationship with somebody and then all of a sudden you each have these styles, you know, they come at you with yelling or violence. You're like, what the hell? Or you're, you're the one that's yelling and you're like, you know, screaming and they're like crying in the corner because they don't know what the hell's happening, you know, and it's not your personality, dude. That's, that's your, that's your pattern. (laughs) So, um, anyway, but really and truly your relationship overlay patterns are truly separate from, astrology or just your personality and your personality can come from astrology, but it comes from other things too. And it might be your personality or your astrology, but mostly I think it's your overlay pattern. So, okay, this is what you do. How do you notice it? How do you change it? Number one, um, is to, um, step outside of yourself and think about your childhood, see and observe your memories from from how you grew up, from your household growing up, from your childhood. See it as a psychologist would or a cultural anthropologist would view it. See your family and the environment you grew up in and watch your reaction to it. Watch your parents' reaction to each other and how they interacted with you and just observe it without any kind of judgment of it. Try to take the emotion out of it and just try to spot where your reactions come from. Try to spot how you get your relationship overlay patterns. Number two, notice other people have a different way of being in and looking at the world. 
just notice that they might have had a totally different set of circumstances and be okay with that. Number three, realize that conflict arises out of these relationship overlay patterns, these ropes, when they clash, when your style and the other person's style of how you grew up is completely clashing, that's when you get the conflict. That's where the conflict arises. And it comes from opposing viewpoints or opposing ways of being in the world. Number four, see the patterns. Crises can be avoided in relationships. If you see these patterns and you learn to accept yourself and accept the other person and make for allowances, have very wide margins of acceptance for them and for what they went through and for what they are attempting to put you through. If you're having a minor fight and they start screaming, you might want to just step out of that, maybe and step out of the house for a moment. And when they come yelling and screaming, if you walk away, we're done. La la la. Just say, when you're done with this relationship overlay pattern that came from your home environment from you as a kid and has nothing to do with me, then I will come back and we will have a conversation. But right now you're stuck in a pattern. There's nothing I can do. If you want to keep it as a holding pattern, that's on you. And if you really want it to be done, that's okay. But if you could see that this is a pattern, then I could come back and we can enjoy life together again. You know, I had a boyfriend who would go into these patterns and I'd just be like, you're doing this, but this has nothing to do with me. This has nothing to do with who I am as a person. You're accusing me of things that have nothing to do with me. This is your relationship stuff that came from when you were growing up. It came from your ex-girlfriends treating you this way. It came from somewhere other than me. You and I just met. I haven't given you any indication that this is who I am. You're assuming because you're not healed from the past tragedy or trauma or bad relationships or whatever. So when you're done acting this way towards me, then I'll either come back or 